Today, we're gonna to kick things off with some Starship current events going on down there in Boca Chica, Texas. Then we'll debrief the recent Demo 2 and Starlink launches, and then go over a bunch of miscellaneous SpaceX factoids of the week. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. In case you haven't heard, which you have, Starship SN4 exploded last week, when shortly after performing the vehicle's fifth static fire test, a fireball erupted from the bottom of the vessel, sending shrapnel up into the LOX tank and causing the upper methane tank to fall into the fiery chaos below, creating a secondary explosion. It was an impressive sight to behold, just look at some of the debris that implanted itself hundreds of meters away in the local wildlife area. But now we have a lead into what may have caused this massive rud. Elon was asked to comment on the situation while leaving the Demo 2 press site at the Kennedy Space Center, and he said, quote, Unfortunately, what we thought was going to be a minor test of a quick disconnect ended up being a big problem. So the key word there is disconnect. Starship uses an umbilical port that runs from the ground support equipment, like fuel lines, and attaches to the vehicle's hull. The part that attaches to the ship is a very complex piece of equipment because it needs to rapidly release and disconnect during liftoff while simultaneously providing communications to the ground controllers. So the likeliest explanation for this anomaly was that this disconnect on the umbilical wasn't fully able to reconnect after the test was complete, which caused liquid methane to spray all over the place and ignite. The good news is that SpaceX is pressing forward. They already have extra test stands on site that they had shipped from Cocoa, Florida months ago, and SN5, 6, and 7 are still proceeding with development and it appears that SN6 is quickly catching up to SN5. And more road closures have been scheduled for early next week. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but what we do know is that SpaceX will continue funding the program because they just raised a total of $567 million from 27 different investors during the last two funding rounds. These funds will most likely be used for the Starship and Starlink programs and should be enough to provide another 12 months of financial support for their developments. So make no mistake, Elon is still planning on a 2022 cargo mission to Mars. All right, let's move on and debrief the Demo 2 launch. On Saturday, NASA astronauts Bob and Doug sat back in their recliner chairs and waited their moment to make history as the first passengers of a commercial rocket. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. And then history was made. Zero, ignition. Because the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon go NASA, go SpaceX, Godspeed, Bob and Doug. America has launched. And so rises the new era of American space flight, and with it the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. It was really cool to experience the ride with them with that in cabin feed SpaceX provided to the viewers. And what was also a nice little bonus was that the booster successfully landed on the drone ship. What should they do with it? Place it in a museum or launch that sucker again? But anyway, Bob, Doug, and their floaty sequence dinosaur made their way to the space station over the following 18 hours, and again shared some of the experience with us. Rendezvousing and autonomously docking the next morning, followed by the opening of the hatch and a bonk on the head. President Trump and Vice President Pence both gave a speech to celebrate the American achievement and personally congratulated SpaceX and Elon Musk. But in 2002, he began pouring tens of millions of dollars of his own money into research and development for a new rocket. He's a little different than a lot of other people. He liked rockets. Elon Musk, congratulations. Congratulations, Elon. I especially love this photo taken by Greg Scott. Trump was at the Cape for Wednesday's launch, but provided some humor when it was scrubbed because of the weather. And I was here two days ago, and I said to Jim, Jim, it's okay, why don't you wait five or ten minutes? And he said, sir, we only have a window of one second. And I walked out of here shaking my head. No matter your political views, I think we can all agree on this. The best is yet to come. There was also a post-launch press briefing afterward, and Elon gave a pretty heartfelt speech to take in the moment. I think this is something that should really get people, I mean, right on the heart of anyone who is, uh, has any spirit of exploration. And the United States is a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. I think this is something that's particularly important um, in the United States, but appeals to everyone with the, uh, throughout the world who has within them the spirit of exploration. 
But in typical Elon fashion, he also made some pretty epic jokes and was the only one in the room willing to laugh. The trampoline is working. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, it's an inside joke. In inside about. joke, yeah. <laughs> If you're not in on this joke, let me fill you in. In 2014, the head of the Russian space agency, Dmitry Rogozin, and NASA both bumped heads and Dmitry told NASA they should consider using a trampoline to get to space since they obviously didn't have a way to get there at the time. But good old Dmitry took Elon's joke like a man, reaching out to congratulate NASA and SpaceX for their achievement. Please convey my sincerest greetings to Elon Musk, I loved his joke, and SpaceX. Looking forward to further cooperation. To which Elon responded in kind, Thanks, sir. Ha ha. We look forward to mutually beneficial and prosperous long-term cooperation. And then just this last Wednesday, SpaceX launched another Falcon rocket into orbit. And this was for the eighth batch of 60 Starlink satellites. This is the first flock to contain sun visors to aid in the reduction of light pollution they reflect to stargazers. They were released successfully into low Earth orbit, where over the coming months, they'll use their onboard ion thrusters to slowly raise their altitude. This was also the fifth flight for the booster, and it was the first time a Falcon booster landed successfully for a fifth time. Achievement unlocked. There are still a few more launches expected to take place later this month, but we don't have any set dates yet, except I think June 30th for GPS-3. And the last little bit of good news I have for you here is that SpaceX's shop may eventually be repping some pretty epic merch, possibly a SpaceX jacket that looks like a Starman spacesuit and a detailed scale model of the Dragon capsule. I support these recommendations. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. A special shout out to all my eccentric YouTube members and patrons who support what I do. I do it for you. If you'd like to partake in some extra eccentric content, check out the links in the description below. Have a nominal weekend. Don't do anything I would do. And Godspeed. <laughs>